your soul. Yes, Lord. That's why you got to prepare yourself for who's really to come into your life. Ah, uh, hey, thank you, sir. I feel that in my soul. You got to get to the place where you don't get mad and stop allowing your vulnerable self. Stop allowing your vulnerable self to get so lonely at night that you feel like you got to go back in order to go forward. Stop allowing the enemy. You don't hear what I'm telling you. I don't care how lonely it gets. I don't care how vulnerable you get. I don't care how much you feel like you got to do something to keep yourself busy. Go out and take a walk. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Love yourself. Go. Go take yourself to dinner. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Either. Go take yourself shopping. Don't base what you do because of who's around you. Base what you do because you love yourself. Jesus. I see you. The Bible says, and I'm telling you tonight, I promise you I ain't gonna keep y'all long tonight. But after this message, there's going to be a deliverance that's going to hit tonight. I'm telling you, my soul, 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 my Saw that venomous beast hang on his hand. They said amongst themselves, You know what? This man got to be a murderer. Let me insert something in this, and if it comes down your street, please respond so I know I'm in the right house. When they saw you fall, Knowing that you pray for them. They said, this man don't mean nothing. But yet still it was your message that brought them deliverance. When nobody was praying for them. And every time they heard something about them, they started doing this. And it was you that prayed them through. That now they feel like because they've gotten over what could have ruined their whole name. Now they forget about you. Now they're over you. Y'all ain't, oh Lord, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. What am I saying? They said amongst themselves, this man can't be living right. This man don't know God. This man don't have a prayer life. This man don't even know how to speak in tongues. Now this type of Holy Ghost I'm singing in church, they're making up tongues. And it's making me real nervous. I was not supposed to be going that way. But I gotta stay here for at least five more seconds. Why do you come to church to play a game? Why do you do that? Why? Why do you insult the Holy Ghost? Why do you do that? Do you not understand? Thank you. Do you not understand that the mercy of God is so rich? If we were living in old ancient times, when people came in with all types of spirits and all types of mentalities and all types of agendas and all types of attitudes and all types of disposition, they came into the house of God and if they weren't right, they died in the holy place. 
presence of God. Paul says that I do not frustrate, Corey, the grace of God. I don't frustrate it. Do you know what that frustrate means? It means you aggravate it. You come to church, glory to God, with, oh Lord, 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 Lord. <laughs> you come to church with fighting on your mind. I am going to say I am going to say You come to church with a spirit of anger. You come to church with a spirit of bitterness. You come to church even with the spirit of insecurity. What do you mean insecurity? You got to get other people to fight your own battle. Y'all ain't saying that to me. I'm going to say it. You cannot defend yourself. Now let me say something to you. We should not come to fight. Nobody but God, the devil. Not God, the devil. The reason why I'm saying that is because the Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. If you're going to do any battling, you ought to do it against the one that don't like you. Why is that? That's scripture. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You come to church and you have that same disposition and then it the attitude starts going seesaw. Now the whole atmosphere is going seesaw. Now the praise and worship leader got to work you too hard to praise him. Now the MC got to work you too hard to praise him. Then by the time you finally get to that place where you need to praise him, the service is over. When I say this, anybody that is a real genuine praiser, let me say something. And I'm about to mess up here. Because a lot of times people feel that praise, don't get me wrong, praise, the Bible says, is comely for the upright. But praise will not excuse you from judgment if you're in sin. Praise will not excuse you. If you have a mean heart, you can do all of this praise in that church. But if God takes the breath out of your body, the state that you were in when he takes it out, is where you're going to wind up and it won't be with God. That's why when I come to church, I don't come to church for people. I don't, I don't come to church. I don't come to church to get a name for myself. I don't come to church, glory to God, to try to fight it, try to do all of this quarreling. I don't come to church to see who's wearing what and what they got on and how they smell and what they got on, what side of their earring they got an earring, what side of their ear they got an earring, and what type of when they got on. When I come to the house of God, the only one that deserves any attention besides the honoree is God. And if you know that God deserves all of your attention, all of your praise, all of your glory, all of your honor, lift your hand, open your mouth, and tell God, thank you. All right. And the Bible says, they said amongst themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. Whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance or justice suffereth it not to live. The Bible says that they said, when they said here, when they were watching what was going on with him, they had their assumption of why he was dealing with what he was dealing with. Paul understanding what they were saying. And if I could use my own imagination, he looked at them with the viper on his hand and did just like this. And what he was doing, and this is, this is mine, I could be wrong, but this is how it blessed me. What he did in my eyes was to allow them that were looking at him with expectancy to fail, with expectancy to fall short, with expectancy to get a scandal, with expectancy to lose all of his name, all of his reputation, all of his influence. With all of that, he turned around and 
looked at him and said, Jesus. And I know some of you are like, what are you trying to say, chaplain? This is what I'm saying. The Bible says he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Now, a viper is poisonous. A viper in this time, when a viper fastens on your hand, there was a theology that says that they believe if they escape everything else, if something of the norm as of this magnitude happens to them, that was their way of saying that justice caught up to them. And in the moment when they thought justice caught up to them, and they thought that the venomous beast was going to put its mouth on their body, on their arm, it could some say your arm, some say a hand, whatever it was, they put it on their arm and they expected the venom to seep into Paul. And once venom gets into a body, it starts the process for death. And they expected at that present moment, any moment now, he's going to die. Thank you. Any moment now, he's going to fall short. He's going to crumble. Any moment now. It looks like he's on the mountain now. But any moment now, he's going to go under. Isn't any moment now, they're going to go in the valley. Any moment now, somebody going to come up saying, and that's my baby daddy. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Any moment now. Oh, I'm coming down your street today. I know y'all want to act cute tonight. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is saying to me right now that we're living in a time where people now don't want to see nobody succeed. They rather get joy out of seeing somebody go under instead of go over. And you know what type of person that individual is? They are a selfish, pompous, heady, high-minded individual. They are arrogant. They are prideful. They are full of themselves. Yes, I said it. They are full of themselves to the point that they feel like the only way true victory will come is through them. Let me share something with you. When I say this, if anybody really appreciates who you are in God, you'll really get happy when I say this. I want you to understand that this season that you're getting ready to go into is going to be a sweatless season of victory. Why do I say that? Because the very same people that think because you don't talk, you don't know nothing. The very same people that think that you're not qualified 